We're going to proceed with specific exercises according to the four T's. We're going to look at tear as a cause of postpartum hemorrhage. Perineal tear repairs. The perineum has five layers of tissue that you need to be aware of. And they're all demonstrated in this model. You have vaginal mucosa, skin, the pelvic floor, the anus, and rectal mucosa. We classify perineal tears as first degree, which only involve the vaginal mucosa, second degree, which involve the vaginal mucosa, skin, and pelvic floor, third degree, which is vaginal mucosa, skin, pelvic floor, and anal sphincter, and fourth degree, when that tear involves all the layers, vaginal mucosa, skin, pelvic floor, anus, and rectum. In this model, we have all those tissues, but we're going to focus on the repair of the second degree. First degree tears may require repair if they're bleeding, but it's just a simple closure of the laceration. Second degree is also similar to episiotomy the intentional incision that you make to have the baby delivered. Third degree involves repair of the anus. Midwives are often advised to, ad, to refer those. And for sure, when you get into the rectal mucosa, they should be referred. So I will demonstrate how to do a repair of a second degree laceration after making that second degree laceration as an episiotomy. So we're looking at our model. First of all, notice that we're being respectful to the patient by draping her. It's important, even when you're working on the perineum, if you cover her legs and knees, she will feel less exposed and, and feel less disrespected. This model has vaginal mucosa, skin, it has an anal canal with rectal mucosa. So all the dimensions of a perineal repair can be performed. We are going to do a second degree repair and we will make the same incision as one does for an episiotomy. For an episiotomy, you would give local anesthesia beforehand. If it's a tear that happens during the birth process that no local anesthesia has been given, you would then infiltrate that. So we have infiltrated the perineum. We would now, on the maximum part of a contraction, put in our scissors and cut. When we do that, we cut the vaginal mucosa, we cut the pelvic floor, and we cut the skin. So that is a second degree laceration. We have not gone down into the anal canal. So we inspect it. We find the apex of the vaginal tear. We want to start our suturing from that point. So generally, I spread my fingers, spread the vaginal mucosa so that I can see both sides of the tear and I want to get my suture at the very top. Even a little above the top is okay because if there is a gap there, you can get continued bleeding. So you want to control it right from the top of the, of the vaginal tear. And you make a tie, you can do a hand tie or you can do an instrument tie. So I'm just bringing the vaginal mucosa onto itself. Vaginal mucosa to vaginal mucosa.
the vaginal mucosa has been closed. You can save suture material by then taking your suture down through the vaginal mucosa to get to the combination of pelvic sling muscles and subcutaneous tissue and you can sew that with this so you go again to the apex and you can sew that up So you need to get all the deep tissue closed. So that layer is closed. It seems to have torn a bit, so I just take another bite. And then I would come up through this to the apex of the skin. So you can do a subcuticular closure of the skin. You could do a mattress closure, almost anything. So you've now closed the vaginal mucosa, the deep tissue of the pelvic floor, and the skin. And you would then use an instrument tie to tie the suture to itself. So, you have now repaired a second degree laceration. The vaginal mucosa, the deeper tissue, and the skin. Thank you for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and be sure to subscribe and like us on YouTube. If you would like more information about CNIS or on how to become our member, please go to www.cnis.ca.